reaching Scott by phone? No, hopefully he can work out his issues. Okay. Okay, Madam Chair, we are recording and we are ready to begin. Good afternoon, welcome. It's 5.34 p.m. and I am calling the September 29, 2021 uh, special meeting of the Historic Site Preservation Board to order. Uh, please silent all cell phones. May we please have the roll call? Yes, good evening, Madam Chair. Uh, Member Rose is excused tonight. Uh, Member Hansen? Here. Member Miller? Here. <laughs> Very good. Member Rosenau? Here. Member Kaiser? Vice Chair Nelson? Present. And Chair Hoff, you have a quorum. Present. Thank you. May we please <clears throat> have the staff report on the posting of the agenda? Yes, the agenda for this meeting was posted for public review at the City Hall Bulletin Board and at the Planning Department counter on Thursday, September 23rd, 2021, as established by policies and procedures. Does the board have any revisions to the agenda? None. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Motion? So moved. Kaiser, second? Second. Miller? Oh, hi, Miller. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so I have a motion by Kaiser and a second by Miller. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I call for the question. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes six to zero. So next is public comment. This time has been set aside for members of the public to address the Historic Site Preservation Board on agenda items and items of general interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Although the Historic Site Preservation Board values your comments pursuant to the Brown Act, it generally cannot take any action on items not listed on that posted agenda. There will be three minutes assigned for each speaker. Testimony for public hearings will be taken at the time of the hearing. Uh, staff, has anyone requested to comment on a non-public hearing item or an item that is not on today's agenda? Madam Chair, I did receive a call this afternoon that uh, Peter Baruzzi was interested in uh, speaking on public comment, but uh, I do not see him here in the meeting with us. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Mr. Maruzzi. If you would like to unmute your mic, and uh, you have three minutes. Hello, everyone. This is Peter Maruzzi of the Palm Springs Modern Committee. Regarding the mural, I am in agreement with the staff recommendation that the HSPB should grant the Certificate of Appropriateness for the mural as a temporary exhibit with the condition that it be removed upon commencement of the reuse or rehabilitation of the building. What troubles me is exactly what constitutes commencement of the reuse or rehabilitation of the building. Would it be when interior renovations begin or only when exterior renovations commence? How far along will the work need to be before the removal is triggered? I suggest that commencement be defined as the moment when exterior or interior renovation begins that is associated with the building's reuse or rehabilitation. We must also recognize that once the mural has been in place for possibly an extended period of time, it will be difficult and potentially unpopular to remove, despite the requirement to do so, because it will have served as a powerful remembrance of our two heroic fallen police officers. That's the risk of installing a temporary rem remembrance of such a strong emotional nature for our police department and the community on a class one historic site. Thank you. Any other speakers? Mr. Torres is here as the uh, representative of the Police Officers Association, Madam Chair. So he probably will speak uh, once you uh, uh, have okay. questions that you may have of me. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that just a little bit later. So um, seeing no other speakers, uh, we'll proceed. Uh, to the agenda items, and there are none on the consent calendar or public hearings or unfinished business. So we'll proceed directly then to the new business. 
agenda item 4A, the Palm Springs Police Officers Association seeking a certificate of appropriateness for installation of the mural on the south facade of the Town and Country Center. Um, may we please have a staff report? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as noted, on September 15th, the Palm Springs Police Officers Association submitted an application seeking approval to install a mural on the south facade of the Town and Country Center, a Class 1 historic site. Uh, the mural will be facing a privately owned parking lot on the same parcel on which the building is located. The applicant has initiated installation of the mural prior to obtaining approvals. Our recommendation on this matter is to grant the certificate of appropriateness for the proposed mural to be in place as a temporary exhibit with the condition that it be removed upon commencement of the reuse or rehabilitation of the building. Um, as you know, the Town and Country Center was developed over a period of several years and the complex was granted class one landmark status on April 20th, 2016. <clears throat> Um, on page two of your staff report are uh, the descriptors from the uh, resolution defining the building as a landmark about its significance. Uh, <clears throat> and it does note that there are no mention of noteworthy or character defining features associated with the south facade where the mural is being proposed. Uh, it does note uh, that the uh, tenant spaces in the building are very much oriented toward the courtyard with no doors, windows, or other architectural articulation along the north or south facades. This pattern of development with no building fenestration on the sides is characteristic of the downtown where the zoning ordinance allows buildings to be built up to the side property lines. So as noted on page two, the proposed project is a 20 foot by 20 foot mural on the south facade of the 169 building. As you know, Town and Country is comprised of several different buildings and several different addresses. So this is the building that is often referred to as the Zelda's building, or that one which uh, uh, is located primarily on the Indian Canyon frontage. <clears throat> as noted, the mural is a visual memorial to the Palm Springs police officers who were killed in 2016 while on duty. And the mural is intended to be a part of a commemorative event recognizing the date that the officers were killed, which is October 8th. It features portraits of the two officers with the Almirador Hotel in the background. On page three of your staff report, you can see the image uh, from last week of the mural already in progress being painted on the building. The analysis for your certificate of appropriateness begins on page four of your staff report. <clears throat> And what we are noting, as we've made the findings, is that the building, when you look at it in terms of this south facade, has no character defining features on this particular facade. It is a blank facade painted with stucco. <clears throat> the appearance, looking at the top of page five of this mural on the south facade could assist in uh, keeping the building in an attractive, well-painted condition um, it doesn't necessarily assist in uh, preserving the building, but it dresses it up in the interim until the reuse of the building can begin. The mural is also uh, uh, noted that if, if uh, in terms of affecting the um, historic resources or the defining characteristics, uh, we've noted that the, uh, the, build, the building as it goes into its rehabilitation or reuse could potentially introduce or be proposed to have openings, fenestration, windows, doors, and so on, on this south facade. We don't know at this point what uh, the ultimate uh, reuse will require in terms of any modifications to this facade. Uh, because of that, uh, we've looked at this as a potential temporary installation that once this rehab of the building does take place and the reuse is commenced, the mural could be painted over and the building would have no other adverse impact as a result of the proposed mural. <clears throat> in terms of the project's review under CEQA, we note that the building is an existing building and we believe that a categorical, a categorical exemption uh, as a class one categorical exemption, existing structures is appropriate here. And the analysis under CEQA is provided for you on page six noting that the, alter the alteration must be minor, which it is, 
The alteration is not on a structure. Um, excuse me, the alteration is on a structure, the town and country center, and that it uh, must not expand the existing or former use. And it does not do that. So we believe that the class one or the um, type one uh, categorical exemption under CEQA is appropriate. <clears throat> um, so as we've noted, we are recommending uh, approval or a certificate of appropriateness for this proposed mural with the condition that once the building does move forward with its reuse and renovation, that the mural would be painted over and the surface would be returned to a simple monolithic uh, uh, single painted color. Uh, with that, uh, that concludes my staff report. Um, Mr. Uh, Torres is here who can speak on behalf of the Police Officers Association and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Lyon. Does the board have any questions uh, for Mr. Lyon? Any questions? Nelson? Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I have um, one question for staff at the bottom of the first page of the staff report, there's a footnote saying that the city is pursuing penalties under uh, the municipal code for starting installation of the mural prior to approval. Are you able to clarify the amount of those penalties? I, I don't know the answer to that, um, Mr. Nelson. I, I would have to look into that further. I don't know what the amounts would be. Great, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Rosanelle? I've got two related to the relevant uh, city actions. Um, back in, uh, before I joined the HSPB back in April of 18, uh, the HSP approved, approved, pardon me, minor repairs and repaint. Um, are the current colors on the uh, uh, town and country considered the original colors at this point? Yes, they are. Okay. And then uh, right before the, uh, the lockdown last year, we approved the uh, alterations, which looked very exciting. Um, and it was also approved by the AAC. Um, has the tenant indicated when they are going to start, uh, uh, start the improvements at all? We have not heard from the building owner whether those prospective tenants are actually still under potential uh, lease contract. Uh, I've not heard anything uh, from the building owner, um, I do not know whether the lease arrangements for those prospective tenants has fallen through or whether they're still potentially in play. Any other questions for Mr. Lyon? Hanson? Unmute, please. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, just in reference to Mr. Marusi's question about, you know, the definition of um, when work is commencing, um, sorry, I'm trying to look at my recommendation. Commencement of the reuse rehabilitation. Do you have a particular definition of that? Uh, I don't. Uh, when we generally think about reuse or rehabilitation, we're looking at either exterior or interior modifications. They could be tenant improvements that drive either interior or exterior renovations, but we did not uh, prescribe uh, that particular definition. That's one that if you wish to do so, you could certainly further define in your action. And was is commencement, would that be, you know, at the point of which, you know, someone submits a project? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions for Mr. Lyon? Any other? Okay. So now we would like to invite Mr. Torres to uh, please um, share anything more about the project uh, for the board's con uh, consideration. So welcome Mr. Torres and unmute please. Thank you, Madam Chair and the board. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Torres. I am um, representing the uh, Police Officers Association today. Um, first and foremost, I wanna sincerely apologize for, uh, for how this all kind of came about and how everything occurred. Um, I uh, researched information prior to starting this uh, project. Um, I was given bad information, but I take full responsibility for not doing my due diligence and uh, getting all the facts straight prior to uh, getting this, uh, this mural started. Um, that was, had no intent at all in any disrespect to anybody or any board or any commission uh, involved in this in the city. Um, 
once again, we, we, we had no mouse in tent in this whole thing. Um, the whole purpose of this, of this uh, mural is to honor the, our two fallen officers uh, who, who gave their lives for our city and our community. Um, additionally, and that's not really spoken upon, is the uh, officers who never came back from that tragic incident and are, are still dealing with the after effects of that, that incident on October 8th, 2016. Um, so I just wanted to come here today and definitely apologize for our, our mistakes and our mishaps throughout this uh, process. Um, I, I would hope that in the future, um, if anything were to come again, we would do this correctly and never have, you know, come to this point where we need special means or anything of that sort. Um, you know, I, I, I appreciate any consideration you guys will give to this and I understand the, the, uh, the effect and the power of this mural uh, for not only for officers, for our police department, for the families that have been uh, obviously been affected by this tragic incident as well as our community. Um, I think this is a way just to honor them and honor the people that were all involved in that day and including the community who came together um, during that time and really we, we bonded as, as a community and, and came together for one another. Um, so I wanna thank you all for the time and consideration in this, in this project. Thank you very much, Mr. Torres. I'd like to ask the board if there are any further questions uh, of Mr. Torres or, or any other questions that need to come forth right now? Any questions? Anyone? Okay, seeing no further questions, may I please have a motion? Mr. Nelson? Yeah. Uh, or you have a question? Not so much a question for Mr. Torres, but um, uh, maybe some comments. Um, just a couple of brief comments. Um, I was just curious as to whether uh, there had been any discussion about doing the entire wall as opposed to just the section that was completed. Um, also, I did just drive by the mural about uh, an hour ago, and it turned out quite nice. It's very beautiful. And I love the fact that it incorporates another class one historic site the El Mirador Tower. Um, it's also worth noting that um, this very unfortunate incident where these two officers made the ultimate sacrifice occurred the same year that Town and Country Center was designated a class one effect, uh, over five years ago now. Um, so it's nice that after that long, a mural is finally going up to honor these two fallen officers. Um, so I'm just curious about the wall and whether there was any discussion about using the entire wall and also if any other sites had been considered and what the process was for that, if, if anyone could answer that. Madam Chair, I cannot answer, but I believe Mr. Torres may be able to help us with those questions. So Mr. Torres, would you like to answer? And you turn your uh, mic back on, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the the size of the uh, mural uh, was essentially based on cost. We, we were doing the best we can to, to uh, raise as much money to, as we could to make it as big as possible. That wall is uh, very large, and for the artists, the, the it was it was more of of a just trying doing the best we can with what we had at at that time. Um, as far as how it came about, we were uh, fortunate enough to to be um, given opportunity um, by the uh, we spoke to the property owner who was uh, very open to the mural and understood the importance of it for us, for our city and for our police department and was uh, was very gracious in allowing us to, to use, or give, give us his, at least his approval as far as using that mural or, or using that, uh, that building. Great, okay, thank you. Very much. Any other comments or questions of any type? Mr. Miller? Yes. Um... Picking up on what Peter Maruzzi said, and uh, Ms. Hansen also mentioned it regarding the the time frame of this, I'm a little concerned. Um, number one, at the um, maybe the ambiguity of the uh, of trying to decipher what is commencement, um, and but but the bigger question that I have is why why tie it in necessarily to the beginning of commencement of work on the building? Um, if there's no work gonna be done on the exterior of the building until a certain time, why would we say the mural should go away 
if building work is going on on the inside of the building. In other words, it seems a little um, unnecessary to have the mural go away if there's you know, six months or a year's worth of work being done on the interiors of the structure. Um, and then I also think that we need to have some way of extending the murals existence uh, if it comes back to this board. Um, as Peter mentioned, there is gonna be um, a deserved attachment to this mural um, and it's in its place of honor. Um, and so I'm concerned that the city and or the HSBB is gonna be put in a, an awkward situation um, if, you know, when, when the work starts on the building, I think we should either tie it into uh, either commencement of, bus of business at the building or a certain percentage of the businesses are operating out of the building uh, or maybe even just a, a time frame uh, again, with the caveat that there's some sort of ability to extend it um, because I think you know, there's going to be a lot of concern um, if the mural doesn't um, doesn't get to, to be appreciated for a, a decent amount of time. And I'm a little bit concerned with um, how uncertain that uh, timeline is is attached as a condition. Mm -hmm. I'm curious as to what the other board members think. Yeah. And I, I, I agree with you, uh, Mr. Miller, too, that temporary is kind of a loaded word. Um, and if we could, you know, set a time period in which it could be uh, reviewed, you know, uh, and, 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 and uh, continued or, or reviewed in some way. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's it puts it in a difficult uh, position. Um, Hansen. Yeah, I have a follow-up question in that regard. because so I was thinking similarly um, as board member Miller, you know, why was it necessarily tied to the reuse or rehabilitation? I don't know if the intent was always that this was going to be temporary of the folks, you know, who funded and are, are um, painting the mural, but if it's a complete blank wall and a non-contributing feature, of the building generally, and we're making a decision here that it doesn't impact the building at all as a historic resource. I'm not sure why there would have to be a requirement at all that it's be removed. Mr. Lyon. I wanna just clarify, uh, it was staff's recommendation to bring it in with some type of a time period. Uh, we don't know uh, what will be the ultimate uh, renovation plan for the Town and Country Center. Um, when we looked at the possibility of the building uh, undergoing, uh, you know, its rehabilitation and the tenants are found and um, tenant improvements and exterior improvements are made, when you have a tenant that's moving into that building, you're going to wind up having signage as well. As I said earlier, we don't know uh, whether that south facade will require any kind of openings, windows, doors, or any other kind of fenestration. So we felt that it was... Uh, erring on the side of caution to uh, realize that the building is a historic site. This particular wall is uh, not uh, a, a contributing or defining element, but the building itself is a contributing element in the town and country center. And it's part of the, uh, the significance, the historic significance of the center. So we suggested that as a means of uh, recognizing that uh, when this building does go forward and get uh, repurposed, uh, we don't know what would happen here. And if the mural is suddenly uh, in the way of signage and openings and things like that, you run into almost a messier conflict than if you find some kind of a reasonable time frame uh, for it to uh, for it to uh, stay in place. Um, you may want to ask uh, Mr. Torres if the uh, association uh, feels that there is some other more reasonable uh, duration that might might be uh, they might be amenable to to um, figure out a way to sort of uh, put some uh, parentheses around its its existence, um, but that is the reason why we uh, made that recommendation. Mm -hmm. 
So, Mr. Torres, was there a, like a time period, you know, three years, five years, um, or any any thought about that, the life of it, if, in that position? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, um, it was just spoken upon of, 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 with the owner. Um, I, I believe he says that anywhere from three to five years um, what, was what he was, was gave us the uh, general idea. And once again, we, you know, he doesn't have any uh, immediate plans that we know of just yet as far as the usage of the building. Um, we're just grateful for, for the opportunity to, to honor our officers. Um, as you guys know, this is the fifth anniversary of, of the tragic incident. And, and it just gives us an opportunity to, to once again bring the community and bring the public with the, with the police officer association together um, and, and honor these these uh, these fallen officers as well as, as the people who, who uh, were greatly impacted by this event. Um, so we're, we're by no means we understand there's at some point there may be uh, you know maybe have to be uh, paying over or whatnot, but that, that doesn't change the fact that this is this is something that's so important to honor these people and, and, and make them. Make them uh, just let them know that, that us as a community have never we will never ever forget October eighth, twenty sixteen. Yeah, certainly. Madam Chair. Yes. Yes. I might just interject briefly, based on your conversation. We know that if there's going to be any substantial refurbishment or any changes to the Town and Country Center. It will require the Historic Site Preservation Board to review those changes as part of a certificate of appropriateness. What you might do is delay disposition of the mural until such time as a certificate of appropriateness is considered for the Town and Country Center. And at that point in time, you could decide whether or not it needs to be removed. And so again, just as a suggestion based on your input, uh, you might defer action on removal of the mural until such time as a certificate of appropriateness is considered for the exterior of the Town and Country Center. Thank you very much. Mr. Nelson? Yes, I think that's an excellent recommendation by the director. And um, with all due respect to uh, the Officers Association and the mural, I do find it a little disconcerting that um, even though we have the owner here present at the meeting, uh, the owner of the property, um, he's not chiming in about the timeline for uh, possible uh, beginning or commencement of uh, restoration work. It has been over five years, five and a half years to be exact, since it was designated. And now we're hearing from another source that it could be another three to five years before there's any further work. I find this to be very disturbing for uh, the jewel in the crown of downtown and uh, a class one site that we worked so hard for so many years to get uh, uh, designated. And it's a really important building and uh, it's an important mural. So I think we need to weigh both things very equally. And it, it's, time to move forward with getting this building the love that it needs and the mural is one step in that direction. So let's uh, include the director's uh, recommendation in whichever motion we make. Okay. Ma Madam Ms. Chair, may I say something? Uh, who, <laughs> yes. Let, let, let uh, Michael. Michael okay, Mr. Torres. I'm sorry. I, I just to clarify, I was given no timeline per se as far as the what was going to happen. Like I said, I, I want to make sure I clarify my words here. Um, I, we're hoping for three to five. That's what we're hoping for to keep that mural up. Um, we we never we were never given like a specific time or anything like that. So I, please, I don't want to misinterpret anything. We're just hoping we're just glad for the opportunity and hoping for the opportunity that you will grant us this this opportunity to, to honor these officers. Uh, this this for this mural that's coming up. So sure. once again, I don't want to come off like we're we have any inside information it's like that we we do not we're just hoping for the very best to uh do this uh, to do this mural yeah we understand and didn't mean to put you on on the spot thank you so <laughs> mr kaiser we're expanding this beyond the question that we're being asked to look at right now we're being asked to approve this mural on a temporary basis it can be left undefined or it can be we can't know where we're going with this until we have that information. And we're expanding this beyond what question we're being asked. And again, I tell you, I live with a lawyer and that's how we look at things. Okay. 
So are there any other comments or would someone like to uh, proceed by making a motion? Um, uh, Mr. Kaiser? I move that we accept the staff report as written. Okay, is there a second? 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 <laughs> Okay, well, I'll second. <laughs> I'll second the motion. So I do have a motion uh, by Mr. Kaiser and a second by, by Huff. Um, is there any discussion about that motion, Mr. Nelson? Yes, I'd like to propose an amendment to the motion. And the amendment would be to follow the staff report recommendation, but to add uh, what the director suggested Mm -hmm. uh, that at which time a certificate of, of appropriateness come forward for the town and country center uh, for any work to be reviewed by the HFPB that we then consider uh, the, the mural at that time as well, whatever that time frame may be. Um, mm -hmm. However, I think we should put a cap on it um, because as members of the community have pointed out, um, and like the staff report says, this is a temporary thing. So I would suggest maybe that cap be three years. So Mr. Kaiser, would you accept that amendment? I would. I wish the time frame would be three to five, but I would accept it. Mm-hmm. I, I, Mr. Under, dis under discussion of the amendment, um, would it make sense to also say uh, for a period of up to five years, um, unless further extended by the HSPB? Let's say no work is proposed. On, it would be unfortunate, of course, if no work were to come forward on the building and the rehab in five years. But if it does happen, I wouldn't necessarily want the mural to just have to be painted over theoretically, but rather the HSB uh, PB could look at extending the mural for a, another period of time um, to allow it to, you know, stay there until such time that renovations require it to be removed. Is that is that something that the board would be willing to entertain as a further amendment? Well, may I uh, clarify the uh, what the director said. Flynn, is that in keeping with what you originally stated? It's close enough, Madam Chair. <laughs> I, I, it's, yes. Okay. Okay. And Mr. Nelson? Yeah. Member Miller brings up a very good point. Um, this, this mural cannot be a permanent part of this building because at which time, um, it comes back before the board that we review a certificate of appropriateness to allow the work to move forward, the mural won't be part of a character defining feature of a class one fact. So the appropriate thing to do at that time would be to ask for the mural to be painted over. I know nobody wants to hear that. No one wants to suggest that and I'm not, being uh, malicious in any way, shape, or form. That's just the reality of a classroom fact and the reality of what restoration entails. And based on the Secretary of Interior Standards, it is our duty as a Stoke Site Preservation Board to see to it that the restoration meets those standards. So I would suggest that after the time limit we set, whether it's three or four or five years, that uh, as part of the motion, uh, the Police Officers Association find another location at the expiration of that time for the mural to be painted. I hope everyone understands where I'm going with that. Mr. Kaiser. I do, but that's also putting financial pressure on an organization who is not a financial organization. They have fundraised for this mural mm -hmm. and to put it on them that if this gets painted over that they have to repaint it. That's not really a fair burden to put on the police department. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Me too. 
Okay. Well, we do, we do have that motion um, and we have a second. We have the amendment accepted as well and clarified. And, and Mr. Miller's addition of yes. up to five years uh, with the potential, the potential to years. review and extend. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, and so do we have a good understanding of the, of the motion now? Do you, do you think? Let, Other, let, any... Let's ask Ken if he can, un will you be able to <laughs> decipher that uh, for the minutes or the recap? <laughs> well, let me try. And then you may correct me in any way that uh, okay. makes sense. It seems to me that you're making a motion uh, recommending that you grant the certificate of appropriateness for the mural to be on the building in a temporary basis. And that either upon a certificate of appropriateness involving a, um, a reuse or rehabilitation of the building or five years, uh, it sounds like kind of whichever comes first, uh, the mural would be considered by the HSPB at that time as part of that certificate of appropriateness for removal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but I think you need to add that it's, um, in any event, it's for a minimum of five years, unless mm -hmm. the HSPB, uh, you know, has has reviewed a certificate of appropriateness for changes to the center as part of the renovation. So, in other words, if no nothing comes forward to the board um, in regard to the renovation, the mural is allowed to remain for a period of five years, unless it was extended by the board at a duly noticed hearing. In other words, so that's the, I think that's where I was going with the temporary nature of it. It's for a period of five years, but there's the caveat that it can be extended. And so it doesn't go away in five years in one day no um, if, if no work is, is moving forward on the building. I, I wanted that to be clear as well, that, that it wasn't, as a temporary measure, it's it's not out there for 30 years, theoretically, um, because that wouldn't be temporary. I mean, that's where we're trying to define or give some definition to the word temporary, I think. Mm -hmm. Let me ask member or chair, vice chair Nelson, if, if the, how did you see the five years? <clears throat> Mr. Nelson. Can you clarify what you mean by that? Well, um, when you know Mr. Kaiser raised the the issue of um, changing it from three years to five years, um, I thought that was a fair uh, request and uh, position. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with that five years, but that doesn't mean that the mural is going to go away necessarily after five years. If there's no work on the building that has required a certificate of appropriateness, but the bo but the board would see it again just as we are tonight to extend it beyond that five years. Yeah, I'm fine with the five year mark as long as we can word it in the way that um, whichever comes first, the certificate of appropriateness for review of work to be done to the building or the five years, whichever period comes first, at which time uh, the board will consider whether the mural can remain or be painted over. Okay, that's fair enough. I think that's a fair compromise. Okay, and Mr. Lyon, that language is good. Duly noted. There for you. Okay, <laughs> so, all right. So we, we have the motion and the amendment in the second and discussion. Are, are we, um, any more discussion on this motion? No. Okay, so I'm going to um, call for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, okay, any opposed? Okay, the motion passes six to zero. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mr. Torres for uh, being present tonight and giving us your comments. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you all very, very, very much. Okay, thank you. So uh, that completes uh, today's agenda. Are there any other comments uh, from the board that you'd like to make today, Mr. Nelson? Yeah, um, we're all aware of the timing of this. And um, 
it's, it's really unfortunate that uh, things didn't unfold in a better way. Um, Palm Springs is a mecca for mid-century modern architecture, and we are known worldwide for a treasure trove of important buildings by important architects. And the owner of this property is very well aware of that. Most everyone in this room at this meeting is aware of that. Modernism we has made the entire world aware of that. And, you know, historic buildings are art themselves. And um, the art of preservation and the art of history is very, very important here. And I think we owe it to ourselves as a community to better synchronize with these types of applications and the Public Art Commission to make sure this doesn't happen again in the future, regardless of who is applying for the mural and what kind of mural it is. It's very important that this process be respected uh, on both ends by all parties, uh, just for the sake of our city and the sake of our uh, tourism, our architecture, and of course, our police officer to keep it a beautiful space place to live. So that's my comment. Thank you, Mr. Torres. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Any other uh, board member comments? Any others this evening? Okay. Uh, does staff have any comments this evening, Mr. Lyon? Not at this time, Madam Chair. Okay. So seeing uh, no further discussions, this uh, special meeting of the HSPB is adjourned to the meeting of Tuesday, October 5, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. And thanks everyone for your uh, very careful attention and consideration this evening for this very special meeting, very significant. So, uh, and thank you from a staff level to all of you for accommodating this special meeting. As I mentioned in an email to you, this is not our common practice. So we will try to be very respectful of your time as well as, as board members. So again, thank you from staff as well. Yes. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.